which is always good, honestly. Speaking of declarative, we I mean, Ansible is very declarative. I'm trying to think what else uh, is it pretty explicit. I call I say explicit like that, um, but w basically what you're gonna see is you're gonna get that what is it atomic. If you run it on one machine, you're gonna get it on the same one. And I think when we talk about you know things being atomic, you want something like a, pro a you want a process to be atomic, right? Kind of like obviously run deck. Um, I know we are getting ready to wrap up run deck here. I know we you have put together i think the cli the command line interface and then just a short fact if we want to jump into that absolutely yeah so the the episode today is going to round out our discussions of run deck uh, hence, hence the, the title, title. like that <laughs> and uh, there's the the, the the title was actually given to jack by me because I couldn't decide on a on a better one, and and I, I was I was stuck here split between you know what 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 do I talk about? Do I talk about the CLI? Um, do I do I talk about the general use case of of Rundeck? And and I think the answer to both those questions were yes, because they both should be discussed. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think both of them are meaty enough to have their own integration discussion. So I'm just going to go ahead and lump these two together. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the next service after that, which is TBD. So the the CLI, uh, if we want to touch on that really quick, uh, is a discussion about the, the CLI tooling uh, that Rundeck provides. So uh, Rundeck has a CLI command RD, um, which is actually a Java client to access and interact with a Rundeck instance from the command line. In a few words, Rundeck CLI is a Rundeck API abstraction tool. With Rundeck CLI, it is possible to view system information, list executions, list of managed jobs, manage keys, list of managed node sources, projects, and jobs in the command line. So it it does a lot. It it, it does most of everything that you need it to. Uh, so just to go over the the basics here, and, and I guess I'll back up a second. So the the way in which we use the Rundex CLI is, I think, solely to create tokens. Uh, and and we, those are those are the API tokens that we pass on to the instances uh, because that is done via Ansible. Uh, while it's acting on the local connection to the to the local machine, which in this case happens to be a container, so we are able to to generate that programmatically and then store it um, in the the repo that we need, so that the instances can use that API key and that API key gets updated uh, every so often. Uh, in fact, all of the existing instances will have theirs updated tomorrow if all goes well, but the the, the CLI uh, has a couple different quirks. So the, the, the first quirk is that it doesn't come pre-installed in the container. Um, so, th and, and even installing Rundeck will not install it, right? It has a repo that you can put in for your system's uh, package manager. Uh, so they have set up instructions for uh, Red Hat type distributions, um, Debian based distributions and the container itself, I believe is built on 1804, uh, Ubuntu, if not 2004, uh, either way that would be a Debian based distribution. So it has the instructions to do that. Um, we have a, what amounts to a post execute script in our setup of run deck, uh, that will, run whatever bash script we, we tell it to. And in there, uh, we basically curl down uh, the script to add it to the repo, run the script, uh, and the script adds all the necessary things to the repo so that we can do a simple apt install uh, of the, the run that client um, inside of the container. Then once that is installed, uh, it needs configuration, of course, because you know, it's not a central Rundex server, it's our own Rundex server. Sure. 
And there are three points that are strictly necessary, at least for our usage of this, which is uh, passing the URL, the user, and the password. Um, and that's detailed out into which environment variables uh, need to be present there. You can also put these into an rd.conf file, but then you have to tell the command line tool where to find that rd.conf file by setting an rdconf environment variable. So it's like for, for some reason, if you don't want to set up the URL user and password as environment variables, you can set up this other environment variable pointing to a file with nice. those things in it. So I, more choice, I guess, uh, if, if you need that uh, flexibility, but I, I, you're not really going to get... Actually, you, you know what? There is probably a flag. I haven't looked this up, but there's probably a flag that you could pass uh, to the RD command line tool to specify where that file is in case you really, really don't want to specify environment, in variables. environment variable for it. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's, that's a bit much for me. I, th I think, <laughs> I think it's fine uh, to set environment <laughs> variables. It's not taboo for anyone. Um, uh, and, and you can also use an API token if you want to. I forgot to mention that. So that's that's also available. Having uh, discussed that previously, those are those are available uh, to use on the command line. Uh, and then lastly, here I list the available commands, um, and and it's really just what I had had gone through before. Uh, there is documentation uh, both on the rundeck.com website and for rundeck dot github.io so their github pages um, are built for the rundex cli repo um, i i think they may be programmatic i honestly didn't dig into it but it it is you know structured in such a way that leads me to believe that this is something that gets generated regularly from from inbuilt information which is which is how it should be in, in fact you know i found a tool uh that not ansible put out some someone else put out but you could you could uh have a markup for your comments in ansible uh that would then generate documentation based on the comments inside your ansible playbooks right and and that is that is really the best way i think to do you know documentation right which is to oh, yeah. have self-documenting code so every time i see that i, I kind of geek out um but the 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 rundex cli tool has all of these these things in the the documentation um for you for us so the next part of this i know previously I had done a question and response episode uh, and, and sent out, you know, a, a call for questions. I just didn't think about that till too late for this. So I put together, you know, three kind of innocuous um, softball questions that we could sure. we could answer uh, on the air here. Uh, so, so, Jack, why don't, why don't you walk us through those and, and uh, feel free to add any spin you think might make it interesting. Well, what's that here on the uh, FAC? for uh run back here um i'll read off the questions here uh the first one here we have is why do you call this an automation front end if you want to answer that one and i was re-listening to i think it was episode four uh where we yeah. kind of introduced run deck as a service and and uh touched on automation front end a little bit uh and, and in going back to that i i picked out four points here so the the first one is it's not an orchestration tool uh the the orchestration tools that I've used have a lot of meta programmability wherein they can during what they are running, you know, what they are running actually changes the run itself in the future. So it's it like, you know, it th there's a lot more than simple branching of okay. of workflows. It's actually like uh, injecting stuff into the workflow that you will be running later or skipping something in advance or, or so doing other things like that. So I guess if it's not an orchestration tool, for my sake here, can you explain, can you give me an example of one orchestration tool? Is that something like Terraform? Or is that, what do you, what do you, ha what do you have in mind? What comes to mind? It's going to be something, something like that. that that is a, a, a 
bit more beefy and uh i i, gotcha. I, I see a lot of this in in the enterprise space so sure. you you think uh service now right where it is okay. also a okay. cmdb I've and gotcha. it is also an itsm tool so you're managing stuff from within change tickets about you know uh items in your configuration management database uh and then you're pulling all of those together and it's making decisions on the fly as to how to deal with the input that it it receives um, so then that can call out then to an automation front end um, to to run individual scripts, right? And and, and to run one thing at a time rather than walk through an entire event of, of different scripts. Now, that's not to say that it's impossible to do that with Rundeck. It's just that Rundeck's functionality is limited in that regard. It, it keeps itself to simple... Uh, simple conditional, simple workflow steps, right? You can do things like include jobs with other steps and have conditional steps. And so there, there is, there's a way to do it, but it's not as beefy as some of the other things that I've touched, nor do I think sh it should be. Okay. Um, enough, yeah. And, and, yeah. and that's one of the other things too, because it's the automation front end is meant to replace butts and seats, right? It's meant to say, if you're working through a change ticket and you get to a task and say, have this team run this script, right? I hate to see that because that should be automated, right? And that's right. the orchestration's job to say, how do I call that thing, right? And with Rundeck, you have a real simple answer. You call it through Rundeck. Like, I mean, that's right. That's the answer to that question right. in all, all scenarios. So Rundex should be the thing that replaces that butt in the seat, and then it should also allow someone to go in and run it, you know, as as you would, you know, in in your seat. You know, they they should allow that kind of interaction, so that you can get that hands-on experience to test it, to go through it, you know, while you while you ensure that this is something that does work correctly. In fact, the majority of the time, and then transition it over into an orchestration tool. Um, the third reason I have as to why I called this an automation front end is because command and control server was already taken. Uh, the sure. interesting thing about Rundeck is that we don't simply use it to, to push out reactionary changes, right? Um, the instances themselves can proactively contact Rundeck to have it do something on their behalf, right? So this isn't this isn't a, a, a dummy kind of instance that we have running out there. It isn't simply something I SSH into to run scripts. It's something that has a service that can accept input and and commands from from other location. Uh, so there, there's a bit more nuanced approach to a, a simple run the script type of, of interface. It, it needs to be secure enough to be accessible uh, to, to receive those requests from other machines, right? So it, it's, it's not simply a, you know, uh, what are some of the things that you and I came up with, Jack? I mean, we had... We had a couple different options like a configuration server or central management. Yeah, right? one was specific to SQL, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And and what we really wanted to communicate was this: this is a, a a front end, right? Both in a sense that it can be used by humans and contacted via the API, right? By by machines, right? For our automation, um, which would be the underlying stuff that we programmed it to do. So that's a that's a long explanation to what probably is a simple question. Answer us why we call it a front end because there's a front there's a web UI around it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. All right. And that's fine. I mean that I think all those answers honestly mm -hmm. are kind of needed because you're right. It's not a full on. It, it's not an enterprise automation tool, right? It's not right. a service now or something enterprisey, but it does give you enough power to do what you need to do and con control the machines. Uh, the next one here, the next question I have for you is don't you, don't we, doesn't our compose just use a small subset of Rundex functionality? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
talk about softball questions here. Yeah, I mean, we're we're not using a lot of what Rundeck has. Uh, for instance, I mean, I've already talked about it. You know, you're able to call jobs from within other jobs, right? That that alone, right, is one of the things that I look for in any kind of tooling that I'm using because that means that I can make stuff modular. That is very, very important, right? Uh, this This whole manual execution, automation, orchestration, three-tier hierarchy thing also exists when you're running scripts. You look at, you know, how we run Ansible. We have we have meta playbooks include specific playbooks which include the necessary roles or the, you know. So so you you want to have this modularity as, as as far as you can, you know, and and Jeff was even talking about it, you know, making stuff just yeah, make it able to make it be able to plug in. Make it make it something easy that developer can walk up and say, "Hey, look, I, I want to do this with this," and then you just say, "Okay, great. Our tool has these features available for you to basically plug and play with your plugin or with your application, whatever you want to kind of si- side load." I'll say. Yeah, and and that is also something I create for future Andrew because I don't know what he's going to come up with, what problems he's going to face. So the more I'm able to make things in a modular type fashion, the more I'm able to to give myself the freedom to do cool things down the road. Right? So so that's that's one of the things that, that we just don't use from within Rundeck because we've already got it down with Ansible. Like we, we don't right. need we right. don't need this functionality out of Rundeck because a lot of what we do is in Ansible. Uh, speaking of that, you know, we don't need to put all the nodes that we manage into Rundeck. We don't need the all the instances to be uh, connecting. Managed. Yeah, yeah to, right. To, to, to be, you know, able to connect via Rundeck, to be managed via Rundeck. You know, we're, we, we just don't because we have uh, inventory files in Ansible and we have uh, private keys that we, we keep, you know, secured, secured within Rundeck. Right, uh, but not necessarily something that we need to to manage the instances with. Ansible does a perfectly fine job itself, going out and doing the needful. Right, uh, so you know there may come a point in time, but we need to. But but once again, this small subset that we're using Rundeck for, you know, is is for mainly for the is mainly for the GUI on top of this and for the API. Oh, for sure. The Well, I'm going to add in one more thing. I think the authentication and authorization Absolutely. is very well done. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, obviously, API we definitely use and take advantage of, but really the ACLs are, I would argue, at an enterprise level uh, for something. And so they're really nice to have, uh, honestly, just when I look at them. It really is. So, and that, and I only say that because it leads right into our next question. What are the alternatives, right? And you can kind of cover them, but I know I'm just going to say it right here. Jenkins is one of them. And I'm sure Jenkins has a plugin, a, a, a great plugin for authentication and ACLs, but out of the box, you just can't beat what Rundeck has to offer. Yeah, and, and that was a lot of what I was seeing as well when I was doing this research way back in the day is that, you know, what what can we use for that automation front end? It's just, you know, um, and, and I believe I had set up actually a Jenkins instance to, to, to demo it out. it out. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it is actually quite powerful, right? Um, however, sure. at its heart, it's a true automated, leave it alone CICD, you know, yep. uh, application builder and and while you know you can bastardize it into an automation front end why do that when you have something like rundeck right when you have something whose whose sole purpose is to be able to to provide that that front end for the for running the scripts now the question inevitably comes up why not awx right the the open source version of sure. advanceable's tower um, and and even I mean tower is free for the first ten instances. Now, obviously, we no longer would be able to qualify for that. But well, we would honestly because we only do one instance. Uh, I think it's for node. Instance. I think it's for managed node. Right, and we only do one. We only have one managed node for Rundeck because nothing connects back. 
But because we run, if we, oh, I guess we, we run Ansible. Run, yeah, we, we run, run Ansible, Ansible with it. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Ansible yeah, yeah. is smart enough to be like, "Hey, you're connecting to a new node. You can't do that." Exactly. Right. Okay, I've gotcha. I've gotcha. I was thinking, yeah, just run AWX. Ansible on localhost, and then yeah, yeah, no, it's it out, not. But no, yeah, I wish. Okay. That. Well, and okay. and even at that point, I mean, we're not taking a, advantage of of any of its features, and it's it's really right. not going to like that. Like for instance, um, there is a plugin that Rundeck has for Ansible, right? Um, it doesn't manage uh, the environment that we have it set up with, right? It doesn't mat. Uh, it, 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 it. I'm not even sure if it can install roles dynamically or you know collections dynamically, right? And we install a brand new collection for every single run, right? And sure, there is something to be said about doing it the tools way, right? Not trying sure. to to get all fancy, but. I think what we have works for us in the sense that it, pro- it allows us the flexibility to use it for development purposes, which also gets us used to that tool as that source of where we're, we're running the stuff from so that we speak the same language, right? Um, AWX, uh, no doubt, is going to have those limitations in place as well, right? right? It's it's going to expect something. It's going to be opinionated. Um, and it's also going to want to, and and I've learned this from, from my day job, you know, it's going to want to run in containers. It's going to want to have execution environments. It's going to want all these things that assume that you're in a, a typical large data center environment where you have a management network that you stand up a server or a cluster on and yeah. then you do the things there and 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 that's simply not what we're dealing with we're dealing with a container inside of a server uh, that's that's running our our automation front end right whereas AWX would want a lot more control over that um not saying that there's not pros uh, to to each of those, you know, Jenkins being able to do a lot more of that meta programming that I was talking about, that orchestration, um, and and AWX really being the gold standard for for Ansible. Uh, but I think for where we are and what we're doing, Rundeck is the perfect fit. It allows me to do just what I need in the way I need to do it. Absolutely. It fits our need perfectly, honestly. 